Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, hey, birdie. other once again in the name of God. Peace be with you. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship service. Loving God, we thank you so much for gathering us once again. And we were so, so grateful for your invitation to the miraculous moment, your resurrection. You died on the cross. Raised from the dead. How amazing it is. Now we are called Easter people. Now you throw a question. How would you leave? How would you leave? We want to be your Easter people, Lord. May we experience every day your resurrection in our daily lives. We want to pro proclaim the good news to the people. And now you call us into this wonderful place. Lord, um, uh, as we prepare our hearts for worship service, Lord, please send your Holy Spirit into, into our uh, each heart so that um, uh, as we worship and praise and uh, sing your name on the highest. Lord, may we experience your presence in this world. Thank you so much for everything. And you always, always in our light and uh, our uh, salvation. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ sending us, sending him to this world. And now, we need to do, we need to share And we pray all this in your precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
morning, everyone. Morning. Good to see everybody here today on this beautiful Sunday. It's the second Sunday of Easter, April 7th. I want to welcome all of our friends in person and online. Welcome. As I said, today is the second Sunday of Easter. It's Communion Sunday. Any pastoral care and prayer requests, please uh, reach out to the pastor at the information noted above on the board. We have several announcements today. We have a worship committee meeting on April 9th, that's Tuesday, at 6.30. The Berlin United Methodist Nursery School open house is Thursday, April 11th, at 6 to 8 p.m. There's a Board of Trustees meeting also on Thursday night at 7 p.m. at the church office. We have some work details coming up. We have one on this Saturday, April 13th, and also on April 27th. That starts at 9 o'clock right here at the church. Our prayer shawl ministry is on April 22nd. That's Monday at the church office at 10 o'clock. The 2024 United Methodist Conference General Conference, United Methodist Church General Conference, is April 23rd through May 8th. This morning's altar flowers are placed on the altar this morning, presented for the glory of God, in honor of Pastor Sam and Katie, given with love by your congregation. Now, if everybody could please stand for the call to worship. How shall we live when the shadows gather? What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Amen. All right, everybody, please remain standing for our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth, in your United Methodist Hymnal, number 92.
morning. Let us open our hearts in prayer and pray for Roger McMichael, friend of Steve Colvin. He has a brain tumor behind his ear and is currently receiving treatment. He will possibly be having surgery sometime in July. And continued prayers for Steve Colvin. Steve had cataract surgery earlier this week. Continue to keep Tina, Trudy's niece, in your prayers. She is undergoing further testing for a medical issue. And also keep Lisa Garvey in your prayers. She also is, will be undergoing testing for a medical issue. As always, pray for Rudy and Trudy, Millard Wilkinson, Steve Colvin, Chick Coolis, Earl McGonagall, Kathy Coolis, Leslie Allwater, Tiffany Brown, Juanita Tweed, and Lynn Benson. Okay. Uh, we have two more prayer requests. Uh, from, uh, one from Mel uh, for Jim Cuth Cuthbert, 80% uh, uh, heart failure. So uh, please keep him in your prayers. And also uh, Tina Goodwin uh, for health issues. Also keep her in your prayers. And from Ginny, uh, for Mike, op uh, Mike, Mike uh, open heart surgery in May. So please keep him also in your prayers. Please join me in prayer. Lord, our Father, as Jesus entered the locked room to show his disciples the beginning of a new world, so enter our hearts and move us to faith in Jesus as, as the risen one. Convince us of, of the reality and significance of the resurrection and free us from all manner of fears. Give us courage in the face of death, knowing that this is the gateway to new resurrected life for those who trust in Christ. Be with your church throughout the world so that its preaching and works of love may continue to testify to the Lord's resurrection. Wherever your church is faithless and lacking in courage to do the work that Jesus has given, visit it and build it up with your spirit. Bring peace to all parts of this earth. Wherever nations are at war and people are divided, visit and bring true reconciliation. Especially protect all people in those nations and help them to influence their country for the good of all. Wherever homes are disrupted by anger and bitterness, wherever relationships are distorted and dulled, visit and bring peace and harmony. Wherever young people are gathered in your name, visit and guide them with your holy word and wisdom. Visit and comfort the sick and suffering too, dear Lord. Heal and strengthen weak bodies. Calm and correct confused in minds. We pray for those we know with particular needs. Support them all with your great love and mercy. And be with those others known to us and whom we just named in our voice and in our hearts. Our God, we present these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns with you, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning's Ministry of Music will be our chancel choir singing the Feast Divine.
I got you. I saved you. Abby, Sadie, come down here. Come down here. Sit right down here. No, Stanley, go up with Daddy. Hello, Stanley. Hello. Come on. Up. Come on. Up. Go up with Daddy. It's okay. Gus, go up. Up, uh, Gus. Call him up. Over here. Come on over. See, the doggies are going up top. You can come sit over here. Sit down. Oh, she's got the Bible. She's ready. You want to put the Bible down so we can play our game? All right, come sit. Hi. Hi. Onion. Okay, you ready? We're going to play a game. How are you today? Did you eat all your candy? No. Go save it. Okay, we're gonna play. We're gonna play a game. Whisper down the lane. Did you ever play Whisper down the lane? No, you never played Whisper down the lane. No, you never heard of it. Uh, Mr. Matt, I'm gonna need you. Can you come over here with us? Okay, Miss Rachel, I need you too. <laughs> What, they're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisper something in Mr. Miss Rachel's ear. And Miss Rachel's going to whisper it in Mr. Matt's ear. And then Mr. Matt's going to whisper it in Sadie's ear. And Sadie's going to whisper it in Abby's ear. Are you girls going to play? Or are you going to read? You're going to read. Okay. And if it gets to Abby and it's right then you know what, what they said. But sometimes when you play Whisper Down the Lane, we're going to put Pastor in there too. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> All right. Now you need to listen. You got to listen. All right. I'm turning off my mic because if I, don't, if I don't turn this off, you know what happens? You'll get to hear what I'm whispering to Miss Rachel. <laughs> Okay, whisper it in Abby's ear. <laughs> okay, what did she say? You got it! Peace be with you! <laughs> oh, you cheated. You heard it from Pastor Sam. You didn't hear it from Sadie. You're right. You know who said that? <laughs> okay do you know who said that who said peace be with you no not me no not him either okay so after jesus rose from he oh that was my funny bone and i don't think it was funny are you all right are you all right okay where are you going Knock, knock. Who's there? Come on, Sophia. Come on over here. <laughs> so, Jesus came to visit the 12 disciples. And they, they didn't, he came to visit the disciples. And he didn't, he came in and he said, peace be with you. But there was one disciple they called him Doubting Thomas. Do you know what doubting means? What's it mean, Ab? You're not really going to happen, or you're not sure about it. Well, Thomas wasn't sure it was Jesus that came to visit. So Jesus had to show his hands so that Thomas can put his finger through so he knew it was Jesus. But he also had to see the scar on G in Jesus' ribs where the knife went through. So, but Jesus said, believe in me. Peace be with you. And he would always be with you in your heart. He may not be here every day of the year for you to see, but he's always here in your heart. Amen? All right, can we, you ready? 
to pray with me? You ready, girls? All right. Cool. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing the children and the adults with us today. We're so glad to know that you are bringing us peace and that you will be with us always in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And it's time for you to go to Sunday school. So we love you. We're so proud of you. And God loves you too. Are you going to wait for the doggies to go? Okay. Over here. I got gotcha. you. All right. Going to have our scripture reading with Jenny. I also wanted to really quick say thank you to the Chancel Choir uh, for their bringing their gifts to the service. It was very nice. And thank you, Mary Lou. <laughs> Good morning. You know, we all missed uh, Rudy and Trudy. They weren't feeling well yesterday when I visited them. So I know they're watching. Hi, guys. Hope you like, this, hope you like the chili I left for you this morning. Uh, the first reading, the New Testament reading, uh, 1 John 1 through 1 and John 2 through 2. That was what was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of the life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we have proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard, so that you have also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we have made him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. I love to say good morning. And that's my always hope and prayer. And I always wish, you know, to our for our, you know, every day, you know, to be good days. So I always say, good morning. Yeah. So today's sermon title is, How Shall We Leave? How Shall We Leave? Here's a question. How many, how many of you prefer darkness over light? <laughs> okay, I prefer darkness. <laughs> Okay, I prefer light. Okay, yeah, I believe everyone. Okay, um, when we are children, we are often afraid of darkness. We put, you know, night lights in our rooms uh, so it's not, you know, too dark. So whenever I uh, turn off the light of this Sophia's room in the parsonage, then her, you know, first reaction is. <gasps> And then, you know, sometimes she, she cries. So we have, you know, night light always that's on. So she feels a little bit more, you know, uh, comfortable with the light. And when a hur hurricane comes through and we lose power, we try to find a way to prevent darkness. So uh, what do we do? 
Yeah. Yeah, we, we do whatever we, we can, you know, make, you know, every, everything that we, we can, you know, uh, make the room, you know, lighter than that. So years ago when, you know, um, I forgot the uh, name of the uh, hurricane, but, you know, uh, when, when the hurricane hit the, you know, New Jersey years ago, uh, it's almost 10 years, and um, Katie's apartment, you know, uh, lost the power. So she, you know, lit the candle, and um, on the morning, the next day, you know, they, each other, you know, Katie and her mom, her dad, you know, found out that, you know, the, here, right here, uh, black, you know, ashes were on there. So the, the candle was, you know, low quality thing. So, you know, when it, you know, lit during the night and, you know, they, when they breathe, you know, breathe, you know, with that and, you know, they, they had the, you know, ashes over there. So, yeah, I, I, when I heard that, then, you know, wow, wow. So, um, and think about, you know, when, you know, we are on the beach and dark cloud rolls up. What do you do? You, you still play? I believe no, nobody, you know, will, will play over there. You know that, you know, your beach, you know, fun is going to be ruined because of that. So once we get to a certain age, we don't even like to, you know, drive, you know, when it's dark outside. So there is something about darkness that, you know, most of us don't like. So today, uh, we are going to hear what, you know, John say about darkness and light. So this is the theme that, you know, he will, you know, he will do beyond the passage that we are covering today. So Jesus was real. Amen? Amen? That he came to the world, and he has made it possible for us to know God clearer through what happened in the Holy Week. And after that, especially his entrance to the Jerusalem and his miraculous ministries and passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection. After Jesus' ascension, when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit in their prayers, their life has been totally changed. Then they went out to the world without fear to proclaim the good news and taught how to live as an Easter people. So this week, John talks more about what it means for us to know God and walk with God. As John describes this, he, he's going to speak of light and darkness. So we are going to look at four realities of this light that John is writing about. First, light is who God is. That's what John is saying. John speaks really straightforwardly in these verses. Verse 5 and 6. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not leave out the truth. John wants us to know that God is 100% light. Amen? John says that there is absolute no darkness in him. He's guaranteed. Did you know that some food is not what you think it is? So often with food, you know, these days, we have to read what? Read the label, right? To find out what? If, you know, something is really what it's supposed to be, right? Is it 100% juice? Is it 100%, you know, uh, real cheese? Is it 100% maple syrup? Often, you know, when my, my wife asks, you know, me to get something special, especially for, you know, baby Sophia, I spend my time at the grocery store just reading labels. 
if it is the right, you know, ingredients for babies. Well, John has put it on the label for us. God is 100% light, and there is no darkness in him. There is no artificial. He is natural light. God is light in that he is 100% good. God is light in that he reveals all that we need to see. God is light in that there is only truth in him. He is perfectly good. He is perfectly holy. He is perfectly powerful. He is perfectly just. There is no darkness in him. There is no, nothing bad, nothing wrong, nothing that needs to be hidden, and no amount of evil at all. Amen? John goes on to say that God is so full of light and so absent of darkness that if we claim that we are following God and there is darkness in our lives, then we are lying. Here's John's point. God is so absent of darkness that it's easy to tell if we are following him, if we have darkness, we are not following God because there is no darkness in him at all. So for now, we must remember that light is who God is. Our God is 100% light. And secondly, light is where fellowship is. Verse 6 and 7 says, If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not leave out the truth. John is telling us that a special relationship, that fellowship is not found by walking in darkness. When we do the things that, that are against the ways of God, We'll not find God there, and we'll not find a special relationship with God there. You won't find an alligator in the desert. Is there anyone who, who've seen alligator in the desert? That's a silly, right? That's not right. And you won't find grits on a Chinese buffet. H have you seen grits? In Chinese buffet? No, I haven't seen that before. You won't find total agreement on social media. <laughs> Always controversial, right? And you won't find God in the darkness. When we live in unholiness, unforgiveness, unkindness, ungodliness, we, we will not find God there, and will not find a relationship with God there. The special relationship that we need with God is found only by walking in the light with God. Not only that, but the special relationship that we need with other people is found by walking in God's ways in the light. Verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If you want to experience the special relationship with other people that you are created to you know, experience, you must be walking in the, in the ways of God, in the light. In all of my ministry experience, when people have told me that you know, they are not connected to other Christians, or they just don't want to be part of the church any longer. I've never said to myself, wow, that's so weird, because that person is so godly. They are so close to Jesus, but they just don't connect with the people of Jesus. Does it make sense? That never happens they usually are not connected with people of light because they are not walking in the light. They always go together. If you believe you are, you are walking, in, walking in the ways of God, then we must be connected to each other. 
And third, light is where cleansing is. What happens uh, if, you know, we are walking in darkness and we want to, you know, get out? What happens if we are in sin and we want to get out of sin? What should we do? What would you do? Pray? Using the terms in this, in the, in today's scripture reading. Go to the light. Then the darkness will go, will, will go away. If you are stuck in dark cave and you're looking for a way to get out, you look for the light and you walk towards the light. Verse 7 to 10 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and blood of Jesus. His Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar, and His word is is not in us. If we are in darkness, go to Jesus. That's the simple answer. Simplest way to get out of the darkness. Go to Jesus, who is the light. If you are dirty and stained by sin in your heart, in your mind, and in your life, go to Jesus for cleansing. Rather than saying if, I should say when. As a matter of fact, John says that if we say that we have no sin, we are lying to ourselves, and the truth is not in us. John is saying that we have sinned and that we will sin. When we do, we should go to Jesus. Verse 9 is so beautiful. What happens when we go to Jesus, the light, with our sin, John says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful, He is righteous to forgive all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You better believe this. Jesus is faithful. Amen? If you go to Him for forgiveness of your sins, He will not only forgive you, but he will make you clean. How comforting us. God will not only wipe away the guilt of your sin, but he will wipe away the mess of your sin. When you go to Jesus, God then looks at you and he doesn't see the guilt of your sin. He sees Jesus in you. When you go to the light and walk in the light, God looks at you and sees the light in you. And last but not least, light is where Jesus is. John wants to focus on Jesus again. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. John doesn't want us to sin. He's writing his letter so that he won't sin. He's writing his letter so that he will walk in the light. However, John also knows that we're still wrestling with the effect of sin in our lives. No exception. John knows that the residue of sin still clings to us. That bothers us. So John says that if we do sin, we have an advocate. Aren't you glad that we have an advocate? 
We need an advocate because God the Father is 100% light. If we have any darkness in us, we cannot have fellowship with God. We need someone to help us. Who need, we need someone who to bridge us to Jesus, to, to God. We need someone to advocate for us. An advocate is someone who helps us and supports us. Our Jesus, who rose from the dead, is our advocate. Not just temporary, but forever and ever. He cleanses us, and he says to the Father, this one is with me. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, is our advocate. John then tells us the primary way that Jesus helps us or advocates for us. Verse 2 says, He himself is the, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Atonement means payment. Jesus is the payment for our sins. There is a payment due for sin. The, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death is the payment, and Jesus paid the payment when he gave his life on the cross. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid for our sins, past, present, and even future. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So let us be grateful. Let us be changed and let us walk in the light. And John also says that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for the whole world. It's worth pointing out that John doesn't mean that everyone's sins in the world are automatically paid for. Not at all. That would be what we call universalism. Meaning everyone would go to heaven no matter what. Is that true? No. That's heresy that the Bible doesn't teach. That's not true according to the Bible. Yes, Jesus, the free gift, has been given to everyone. But the most important part is if you are to accept it or not. That's all about faith. That's not automatic process. What John means is that the forgiveness of Jesus is available for the entire world. As we read in, as we, uh, uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So think of it this way. Forgiveness is available to all, but not automatic for all. So we need to go to Jesus. That's the only way. We need to go to the light, and we need to take others to the light. So I want us to go back to where we started. Our God is light. So let us be people of the light. That takes us to our bottom line. God is light, and we are to be people of light. Listen, we should despise the darkness. We should not want anything to do with the darkness. Of course, when, when I speak of darkness, I'm talking about you know, spiritual darkness, evil, sin, the ways of the world. Instead, we should be people of the light. We should be people of God. We should walk in the light. We should be in Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can walk in the light. I'd like to challenge you with the two ways that you can leave out this passage this week. Determine if you are in the light or in the darkness every single day. 
you know what that means. Are you following the ways of God or your own ways? So you can ask some questions to challenge yourself. Do I ever pray? Do I ever read God's word? Do I love other people? Do I forgive? Am I patient and kind? Am I holy? Ask yourself these questions and more to determine, you know, if you are in the light or in the darkness. It is important to to know where you are right now. And secondly, step into the light. The place that, you know, we need to be is in fellowship with God and also with His people. We need to be in the light. Just like, you know, when you are hesitant to jump into the swimming pool and someone reassures you that the water is wonderful. John is reassuring us that walking in the light is where we need to be. So go ahead and step into the light. Make a decision this week to walk in the light and to live a life of godliness. You will never regret it, but have great joy, greatest joy that nothing can compare with. Let us walk in the light. Amen. Now let us confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day, He rose again. He ascended to heaven. Is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now this is time for offering.
Let us stand and sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now let us pray for our offerings. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ, who became the light in our hearts and in this world. And as we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the uh, betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Steve, Steve, right there. Let us greet once again in Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, and you have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always and always, 
in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the software was over, he took took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised from raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at it at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. Now, all all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. With the confidence of God's children, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because there is one love, we who are many, one are one body, for we all partake of the one love. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Now the Lord's table is open table, which means whoever wants to follow Jesus Christ, who wants to walk in the light of Jesus Christ, come forward and partake and enjoy his blood and bread, his body. So now come forward and partake his body and blood.
of Jesus Christ. slide. One more. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. Let us praise God together all our need. Let us praise God together all our need. When I fall on my knees with my face to the lighting sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you gave yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the good news of Easter. When we try to darken the world with Jesus Christ, who is our love. So now with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of 